Hi, everyone, and welcome to Learning Space. Uh, this week, uh, we are talking with Tavi Greener. Um, did I pronounce your last name right? <laughs> Griner. 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 Sorry, Tavi Griner. Um, <laughs> like, make sure I got the first name and I skipped the last. <laughs> um, we're talking with Tavi Griner about um, uh, some informal astronomy education. Uh, I am one of your hosts today, Nicole Gallucci. I work with CosmoQuest. I am a postdoc. Uh, and I have with me Georgia Bracey. Hello. So, Georgia Bracey also works for CosmoQuest. Um, you are our formal education lead. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Unfortunately, I've totally worked on getting a hands-on demo together today because I've been in meetings all day. Um, I'm sure some of you know what that's like. Yes. Um, but I do have some, some fancy uh, Venus Transit 2012 vintage solar glasses. So I can <laughs> nice. just demonstrate that for you. I can't see a darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you know, sometimes you nice. Yes, I would kind of <laughs> like that. Nap with these on gives you a warm, <laughs> cozy feeling. Yeah. So these are from NASA, SunEarthDayNASA.gov. Um, just a reminder: if you're ever going to do solar observing, as I've I've blogged about this before, please use proper equipment and make sure you've got something that's you know all properly certified. So that's my my cop out <laughs> hands-on <laughs> demo of the week. Since I was in learning there. space tip of the week. Yeah, learning space Science tip, of, tip the of the week. There you go. Um, I'd like to remind you guys if you want to comment or ask questions mm -hmm. along the way, we are uh, monitoring comments on YouTube. So if you're watching there, uh, on the Google Plus event page, on anywhere else on Google Plus where this happens to be posted, I'm pretty sure we are. Yep, we are tracking those. Um, and if you can, if you if you are using Twitter, use the hashtag Learning Space, and that will reach us as well. So feel free to ask questions, and we will try and get to all of them during the broadcast. Um, so, Tavi, hi. <laughs> Welcome hey. to Learning Space. Hi there. Welcome you and your friend in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see him? Right yeah. <laughs> this is the Zynga poster. I love it. Um, so why don't you tell us um, a little bit about your, your background with Astronomy Outreach, all the amazing, awesome stuff you've done. Um, I've done a lot of fun stuff. Um, I started out with SLU.com, which is a remote observatory located in the Canary Islands. And, uh, and they also have um, equipment in Australia now. And mm. with that, we did, we did um, nightly radio shows to accompany the um, real-time imaging. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, as we observed each object, um, we would talk about it. Uh, explain the science behind it, and we also had news programs uh, and some uh, a lot of interaction with the people who were there. And I also uh, was very involved for quite a while with Astronomy.fm, which is the world's only 24-hour astronomy internet radio station. Um, they have a lot of original programs that they play, and they also replay. Uh, some of the CosmoQuest shows, I think the weekly mm -hmm. space hangouts, do those. Uh, a lot of the more popular shows that are on. Um, and I also do a lot of outreach around here locally with the uh, local planetarium. And I do, we have astronomy um, productions, Rob Count and I, with a skyfullstars.com. We do a lot of interviews with people in the space science industry. Uh, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Tabby, how did you get started? Because I know, and I think you're going to probably talk a little bit more about that later, but for your own personal story, um, did you have a science background? What got you interested, I guess, in astronomy, and then how did you decide to take it further and, and you know, do outreach, share it with everybody else? Yeah, you know what, I, the, how I first got started is just simply being curious about uh, looking up and wondering what was up there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and my husband bought me a used telescope, and I got out there and just started messing around and accidentally found Saturn. Um, wow. Wasn't even looking <laughs> for it, and that blew my mind. I mean, I just, I, that was really a, um, an ethereal moment for me. And, um, and so then, when I moved down here, I didn't know anyone, didn't have much to do, so I thought I'd really get involved in astronomy. And, um, and I have to say it was SLU.com, the remote observatory, that really hooked me on astronomy. Uh, everyone there, was, the group, the people who belonged to that community, uh, were so welcoming. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it was they they invited me. Uh, Michael Forrester was doing the radio show at the time, and he, um, gosh, I'd only been with him for a couple of months uh, as a member, and asked if I'd like to do some radio, and that was it. <laughs> I mean, I just just uh, was full time from then then on. And the neat thing about that, which is something I want to talk about tonight, is that the really cool thing about getting involved in astronomy outreach is um, it leads you to learn. Um, mm -hmm. As you're doing it naturally, is when you, you want to share with other people, you want to know more. And uh, especially when I did the radio shows there and we were talking about all these beautiful deep sky objects, I wanted exciting things to tell people who were listening and who were looking at them. I wanted them to be as excited as I was. And so I did a lot of research about everything and really quickly learned a lot um, about deep space and, and how exciting and, and, and tumultuous it really is. and um, so that's really where a lot of my learning came from. It was just my desire to learn more and uh, and get involved. So, yeah, I agree, and I think um, you know teachers would totally agree with you there. I think a lot of um, what teachers like about um, teaching is that they also learn, and so it kind of feeds on itself sometimes. So you know, sharing something that you love with somebody else is a great way to keep learning about it yourself. And it Absolutely. really just, it just, it keeps just building on itself. And so you learn some more and then you've got to share some more. And then by sharing it more, you know, you keep learning. So it's... You, you do. You're always learning. I homeschool my children. Yeah. And, um, and that's kind of fun because, you know, I have to find fun and creative ways to make them be interested um, and, and find uh, neat ways to approach subjects, you know, non-traditional ways. And... Um, and so I'm learning as I'm I'm looking for stuff for them. I'm learning new things all the time. Right, right. Okay. So you Great. you Go said ahead. you 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 wanted to bring some ideas for people who are interested in, in doing astronomy outreach. Um, something that they can do, you know, start right in their community. That that's right. Um, one of the things I get I get a lot of emails, and I I have since the days of SLU, and I continue to get them. And um, which I really appreciate um, the hearing from people. And you know, I get a lot of uh, emails that you know about people's enthusiasm, um, uh, how much they're learning, and, and and how excited they are. But I also get a lot of emails from people who are interested in getting involved in sharing with others. But they they may be intimidated because uh, they don't have a. Um, a title or a degree, uh, they're not affiliated with a particular group. Um, and one of the ones that most kind of makes me sad is that sometimes I'll get an email from someone who says, you know, I was looking at your blog and I decided to do one because um, I want to share the sky with people, but nobody reads my blog, so I'm not going to do it. And this, and I got one of those. Um, it was a coincidence about two days before Georgia invited me to join you guys here tonight. Um, and so the timing was perfect because I was really saddened by this, this young woman who is very concerned about light pollution. And she has a little science blog. And she had written to ask permission to use some of my night sky images on her series about light pollution. Um, she continued to communicate with me as she developed this story. Um, and I, I gave her links telling her, you know, why light pollution is bad. It's just not about seeing the stars. There's a lot of health concerns uh, associated with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so anyway, about two days before Georgia invited me, she sent me an email and said, I decided I'm not going to do the story. Nobody reads my blog. Mm. And this really made me sad because here's a person who wants to reach out and they feel like no one will get their message. And this is where we all come in. Um, everyone who's watching right now, everyone out there who's enthusiastic about astronomy, you don't need a title, you don't need a degree, you don't need a big audience. If you tell one person, that's, that's so important that, that you made a difference. You have made a difference because that one person will share with someone else. Um, and it's an exponential thing. Um, so there are a lot of ways that if you're not someone who's um, 
you know, very gregarious, you, maybe you're a quiet person and, and you don't or you don't have a lot of time, there are so many little things that you can do to make a difference. Um, now, um, I've had to be a little less involved with my astronomy outreach with some of the more the larger uh, things that I was doing, but I still have this desire to share, to share the night sky with people, to share the science with people. This science in, is so much an important part of all, everything about our lives, uh, which is kind of one of the, my attractions to space science anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it's about us. It's all about us. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I started doing is, and you can do this, um, and again, you, do, you, know, you don't have to, to have a degree or anything, but you, you know you know what you've learned. Um, I called, there's a little local newspaper here. It's a, it's a little rag, really. Um, <laughs> it's not online. It's, it's just a very local thing, and I don't know how many readers she has. But I know that all her copies are always gone, and it's a free newspaper, too, which is probably why all the copies are always gone. But <laughs> anyway, I asked her, would she be interested in a little weekly, just a couple of paragraphs about the night sky? And, uh, and she said she'd love it. So anyway, every week I do what I write. It's just a couple of paragraphs, and I stay very basic. It, it's, I always have a very basic thing. What is the moon going to do? What's the main sky event? that you don't have to have any interest in space science at all. But everyone likes the moon, and everyone likes yeah. to look up once in a while. And what this does is it piques people's curiosity. Because when people are reading this paper, they may have no... And, and this is something I want to say, too. Is I'm not... I want to reach the people who think they have no interest in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's who's who I want to get to. Yeah. And so... With this little paper, it's perfect because most of the people reading it, I would say, probably do not have any interest or thought they didn't have an interest in the night sky. Um, so, um, but they're going to read this paper, and of course, you know how it is when you read. You just read everything. Right. So they're going to run across that and read, and they're going to start looking up. And it turns out that that's working. You know, I'm yeah. starting to get questions from people. I can tell when I read their emails that, you know, a lot of them don't know that the sun is a star. They had no idea. Um, it's so this is one of the things that you can do. Another really simple thing you can do is um, look at the weekly sky event, something that's very easy to pe for people to look at. They don't have to know anything about the stars. They don't need binoculars. You know, again, a moon event is a good one. Just hand write it on a little piece of paper and post it on the, uh, the employee billboard at work. You know, uh, most people, most workplaces have an employee break room. Stick it up there. Somebody will look at it, and somebody will go outside and look up. <laughs> and, um, and they'll even start to come and ask you questions. Yeah, and yeah you'll become you like really... the local, the resident expert. You'll become the, your resident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they start asking you questions that you don't know the answer to. Yeah. No, um, and that's where you get to learn some more so you can come right, back. Right, I was going to say, that's okay. That's yeah, that's what fine. everybody's afraid of, but <laughs> don't be afraid of that because right. you can learn but some more. It's an opportunity. That is like the simplest of things you can do. Yeah. Hand scribble it on a piece yeah. of paper, a note, piece of notebook paper. You don't even need a computer for that. You don't, you don't need a lot of things to do outreach. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and again, stick it on the billboard. Another thing that you can do is... Our local planetarium is, uh, I went there year before last, the, the, um, when they first started doing the International Observe the Moon Night, the yeah, first yeah. year that they did that. And I know, I guess they've only been doing it two or three years now, right? Um, I think so. That yeah. probably started with the International Year of Astronomy. <sighs> did it in 09? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. But the first year that they did it, I went to my local planetarium and, um, and just went in there and asked them if they knew about that. And they had no idea. And I said, would you mind if I helped you do an event? And they were very excited about it. And the first year, we had a couple dozen people, you know, at the most. Um, but now the neat thing is, is they contact me each year and say, hey, we're going to do International Observe the Moon Night. You want to come get involved and help us? So um, that's another thing you can do. Just go to your local planetarium and... Uh, you know, when they, you know that there's a special event, ask them if they're, if they're going to do anything or if you can help them host it, you know, to, to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm trying to think of some of the things that I do. I do some silly kind of things. I, they're, they're not silly because they really help, but when I'm standing in line at the, uh, at the grocery store, mm -hmm. you, you know you chat with people when you're standing <laughs> in line. I will turn around and say, hey, did you know that the Jupiter's going to be right beside the moon tonight? This is a good <laughs> chance to see Jupiter if you don't know where it is in the sky. And I do this with complete strangers. Oh, my most, gosh. So what most, kind of responses do you get? Most are very positive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, I can think of only one or two people who were not positive. And I know not all of them. Huh? <laughs> they were just having a bad day. They were having a yeah, bad day. You we're at the grocery I store. Nobody probably, wants to be there. I know that probably the International Space Station is another really good one to do. Oh, yeah. That mm -hmm. is, um, in fact, when we first moved to this neighborhood, that was something I shared with a family uh, around the corner. And now there's such huge fans in there. Uh, they're always, um, I hear them out there, you know, they run out there now when I'm out there. And, uh, and they tell other people and get people involved. So there's all these little bitty things that you can do without yeah. having to be um, affiliated with a bigger group. And these little things are important because um, these are what get people coming to uh, the, the larger things who get people to tune into things like Cosmo Quest or mm -hmm. uh, Field Plates Bad Astronomer. Mm -hmm. um, because you get curious and then you start looking yourself to learn more. Yeah. Um, in fact, there's a, I want to tell you about this really cool study. Sure. And this was published in 2012 and the um, Astronomy Society, ASP, of Astronomy Society of the Pacific, mm -hmm. yep. was actually referenced several times in this for mm -hmm. their outstanding work in amateur astronomy outreach. Um, now this paper was, uh, it was in the Astronomy Education Review. Yeah, okay. uh, and, I can find that. Fantastic papers there. This is factors contributing to amateur astronomers involvement in education and public outreach. Um, the authors were Victor Yoko and Eric Jones of the Institute for Learning Innovation and Martin Storchdake of the National Academy of Sciences. In the uh, introduction of the paper, um, this is a really exciting thing that they say. Amateur astronomers, <clears throat> excuse me, those who participate in astronomy as a hobby, provide a vital link between the science of astronomy and the general public by sparking awareness and appreciation of the night sky. And that's where it really starts. That's where, um, and one of the things I think this eventually leads to is our support for NASA too. Um, you know, and I forgot to mention that earlier. I, I think that's one of the most important things, I think, is when we're getting people involved in, in, and getting them to care and have an interest in space science. That's right. Um, and support for our space program. Uh, anyway, it goes on to say, education and public outreach by amateur astronomers in both formal and informal settings has been acknowledged as a critical focus for increasing the public's astronomical interest and scientific literacy. Without amateur astronomers committing their time to education and public outreach efforts, much of the education and public outreach currently taking place would not exist. He goes on to note that some 10,000 uh, amateur astronomers at any given time are engaged in some sort of public outreach uh, and getting people involved and getting people to look up. I think that's a, amazing. I, I was really yeah. impressed with the numbers how many people are really involved. I think that there's the misconception that when we see people doing astronomy outreach, when we see, um, because we know that a lot of the things that we read and stuff, um, we are learning from people who are formally involved in astronomy. Um, professional astronomers, right? That's right, professional right. astronomers. Um, mm -hmm. So it's exciting to know that how important it is for the amateur astronomer, just people like me, um, to get people interested and, and mm -hmm. that you do have the power that you can do it. And you can and you know what's really the most important thing about it is that you're raising people's awareness or, or, or giving them a better understanding of the world around them. You know, there there's so many misunderstandings, um, and you know how the the conspiracy theories are. Mm -hmm. uh, and people just don't really understand the world around them, and I think it's important for them to have just a, a little bit more understanding of it. Oh, definitely. Sure. sure. Could you could you say uh, tell me the title of that paper again? I'm trying to find the link to uh, include that. It's um, 
factors contributing to amateur astronomers' involvement in education and public outreach. And public outreach. Thanks. I will include that once I find. Oh, I found it. There we go. So I will include that link um, in the event comments and then also in the uh, show notes uh, on the YouTube page. So if you guys want to read that, I'm pretty sure AER is an open access journal. Um, yes, so totally online. online. It is. Anybody yeah. can get it. It's all online. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, on your note on, on amateur astronomers, um, the uh, Charlottesville. We did we, in, when I was living in Charlottesville, at University of Virginia. Um, professional astronomers did outreach, but the 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 um, cast, the Charlottesville Astronomical Society, the mm -hmm. amateur astronomers were amazing at doing outreach, at bringing their telescopes to schools, to to events, um, and and doing um, that. Uh, oh my gosh, I did a couple of events with with you know Girl Scout troops and camping, mm -hmm. and it was always those cast guys that were there with their equipment, ready to share the sky. Um, and, it, and you don't have to have a big expensive telescope to do that either. I mean, if you have a you know a, a, a light bucket, you have a Dobsonian, you can kind of bring it out on the sidewalk and do some sidewalk astronomy. Yeah, another thing that gets people interested and gets them asking you questions is um, just a pair of binoculars or a camera. And you know, I'm all around town with my camera um, in the morning and uh, in the evening, early evening. And I frequently have people come up and say, "What you looking at? What you taking pictures of?" <clears throat> There you go, you know. They're and uh, curious. They're curious. That's right. They are, and you let them look too. Um, yeah. There's been a couple of times I've taken my telescope and went and set it up at an empty lot, and you know I'm not looking at anything in particular, but I make sure I do it in a place. You know, I mean, it's kind of hard to find a good dark place that people, a lot of people, are going to be coming by. Right. Uh, right. Typically, there's too many lights, but um, you can look at the moon. You know. Uh, yeah. You no, know, and again, I do it just so people will stop and go, what are you looking at? And then you let them look through your telescope, you know. And yeah, you know, amateur astronomers are such a great, they're just a force. They're, they're so amazing. Um, mm -hmm. and there are people like you, Tabby, that you can just tell as you talk about the subject that you love it. You're just kind of glowing and full of energy as you, you know, talk about astronomy. And most amateur astronomers, um, and I'm thinking more of club members too, but really, you know, anybody who gets out there and looks, um, they're an amateur astronomer. But I'm wondering right. if you um, work with clubs at all, or are you usually, do you usually find yourself kind of out there, you know, on your own, um, maybe with friends or something, or if there's a more formal amateur astronomy club near you? There's it, not. You know. um, in fact, this is something I talk with, talk with the, um, the director of our local planetarium about sometimes, is that um, there is evidently um, an astronomy club near here, but for some reason they have trouble getting things together. Um, I don't know what the deal is with them, but they several times, there's actually two different ones around here, right. several times we've invited them to events and they said they would come and they don't show up. So, you know, I, I don't know what the deal is. So I'm always pretty much alone when I'm doing this, oh. um, when I'm going, and that's okay, and see that's my point. You, it, uh, it's a, it, yeah, that's there are plenty of astronomy clubs, and these. In fact, one of the things that's noted in that paper that I referenced is that how much um, astronomy clubs contribute to encouraging people to do outreach. And it found that most of the people who did outreach were actually involved with an astronomy club mm -hmm. in some way or another. And so the people I want to talk to or reach tonight is the people who may not have an affiliation with an astronomy club, who are like me in a little bitty town um, and alone. You know, they don't know too many people who are really into astronomy like they are. That's okay. You can still, uh, you don't have to turn everyone into an astronomer, yeah. you know, but you can raise awareness with a lot of little things. There's little things that you can do. Um, and like Nicole said, or maybe it was you, Georgia, that um, I'm, pretty soon they start coming and asking you questions. Um, and this gives you an opportunity to teach them a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and, it, and, and you know that the interest is peaked and they, they themselves will start looking for, for more information. And their awareness will have been raised. Right. Yeah, so it right. is. It's important not to just think that you can't do anything because you're just one person. Yeah. So. That's right. Um, you know, the girl who um, most recently wrote me and said that, you know, I'm not going to do my light pollution series because nobody reads my blog. 
you don't have to have a huge audience um, you know or a lot of readers that, that I mean certainly we all want to uh, <laughs> we want to reach as many people and we want to know that our message is being heard but you know the cool thing about the internet is that thing everything stays there pretty much so maybe a, a lot of people aren't reading something right now today but through time they will run across it and of course there's things you can do to, to use uh, social networking to get more people over to your website to get them mm -hmm. to read but in the meantime you know what if one or two people read it that's okay if it's only one or two people because those one or two people will discuss it with someone else mm -hmm. um, and it will grow and that's the important thing I'll see yeah, a question think, from, oh, from Chris Rand um, asking uh, he's our, uh, how can someone who's generally pretty busy help get the word out? Is there a commercial stick, uh, something we can say or do? Um, I'm thinking, I guess I'm thinking, uh, he's asking something along the lines of an elevator pitch. Like maybe what's your astronomy elevator pitch? Well, again, typically it's, I'm pretty much always aware of what's happening in the night sky. Um, and so, you know, this is, that's the conversation starter, you know, um, the elevator pitch is you, you, you say it to, you can say it to a complete stranger. Hey, did you know, because your excitement will show, you know, or have you ever seen Jupiter before? A lot of people love the idea of Jupiter, so it's a great one oh, yeah. to use. Yeah. But, you know, uh, the moon's going to be right beside Jupiter tonight, and so when you see it, you know, you'll recognize it, and now you'll always know when Jupiter, you know, what yeah, you find you those, always those current Jupiter. Sky, skirt, yeah. current sky you know, just a little thing. Yeah. Being aware of what's in the night sky. Um, Tabby, where do you um, get your information about what's up in the night sky? So if you want to, you know, get that so that you can talk to somebody the next time you run into them, is there a source, a favorite source you have? Just a sky calendar, a magazine, uh, or internet? Somewhere yeah, I use a variety of a variety of sources um, for my weekly uh, article. Um, number one, I use is my Stellarium program. Yeah. Stellarium, <laughs> Stellarium is free to download. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's so user friendly. Um, it, it's it's a great program, and anyone can download it. Um, S T uh, Stellarium, S T E L L A R I U M. Yeah, we use that every week for the uh, virtual star party as well. Oh, that's right. Oh, do you really? Yeah, okay. So, so usually Scott Lewis has uh, Stellarium open on one of his screens. And they have a mobile app that you can use. Um, my favorite moon phase, um, moon phase is really good. Uh, people love the crescent moon, and that's another thing to share with people, um, especially if it's going to be beside a planet. But um, Universe Today has a fantastic moon phase app. We know. I, <laughs> I love to push the forward button so you can Thank watch you. the phases go. <laughs> but um, that's a really good one. Um, and uh, we, we love you, Fraser. <laughs> get, the, get the app working. Um, so um, those two I use, and then I always. Um, there. There, there's I, I like to. Uh, and then sometimes I'll look at um, Sky and Telescope. Okay, yeah. There's and, the moon out. Oh, there it is. All right, yeah, I gotta show it. <laughs> Do it so push the button so it phases through the. Um, that way you can see the libation of the moon, so it keeps. Oh, you know, I don't know how. To, I don't know how to do that. Over in the bottom right, there should be a little arrow. I'm not getting that. The That's thing fine. I can't get working is the uh, the map, the the craters map. Oh, okay. We'll no, put sorry. the names of the craters on. Yeah, there's supposed to be a moon now. Start it, rotating. There it is. Is it going? Yeah. There it goes. So I play with that all the time. The moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's my entertainment, watching the moon go around. There it goes. <laughs> and you can totally show somebody this in the, the grocery store line, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I do it. You know what? Because, you know what? If somebody doesn't like it, that's okay. I don't mind. I'll never see them again. So. <laughs> Depends how small the town is. <laughs> I was going to say, Tabby, yeah. you're in a small town, don't you see? That's true. Everybody. Yeah, they probably go, that's that girl. <laughs> Stay away from her. Um, the, and, uh, but I do also like to reference Sky and Telescope and One Minute Astronomer. I really love that website. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if I want to get a look ahead. One of the th fun things I do with my article, um, even though I have basic stuff in it, I always have one paragraph 
with some more complicated space science in it. Um, like this week, I talked about um, supernovas. Now, most of the people I'm talking to, uh, you know, they'll never get to see a supernova. They, they'll never, mm. you know, go. They won't get a telescope and go out and look for it and all that. That's more complicated, and they don't have to. But if they have a little bit of an understanding about supernovas and the science of it, so I always like to include a little extra science in there. Sure, um, and it's probably a term they've heard, maybe even if it's in a movie or mm -hmm. That's right. a program or something. So you can still make that connection there, which I think is what you're doing such a great job at, Tavi, is you're, you know, you're bringing, you're making a connection between, you know, people that don't really, um, aren't aware, like you say, of astronomy at all and how it's all around them. Um, and then the expert, like the professional astronomer. So for some people, you know, that, that's a wide chasm and, and you're kind of in between sort of, I don't know, translating sometimes in a way, but at least making a connection between those two worlds, which is really yeah. cool. And like you yeah. say, you just, it's just one person that you need to do that. In that's the right. Store. That's, that's <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the most important thing I want to say, the message I have is, is don't be discouraged. Um, if you're not, you know, you don't need to, to um, have a huge audience or anything, and don't be discouraged if you are doing a blog or something like that and you feel like you don't have much of an audience, you know what, it's okay. Um, you don't have to have a big audience. Um, the people who do look at your blog or who read what you have to say, they will tell other people. And also, with time, um, things like blogs, they do grow. You know, they do mm -hmm. grow an audience. Mm -hmm. So, I yeah, think that's and uh, there's a concept called the long tail. I mean, you've got, you know, like Phil, <laughs> right? Phil Plate, you know, at the top. And then, you know, it kind of slides down to the rest of us. And then there's this long tail of astronomy bloggers that don't necessarily each have a big audience. But you can use that and, and become an expert at some particular aspect of it. You That's can, right. you know, really focus in on, 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 on the thing you love. Um, and so even if you don't have a big audience, you have an audience that's really interested in that thing that you do. That's right, and and the other thing is is that um, you also what you're doing is providing a link, um, and that's something that that the um, that paper talked about, a link between them and some of the more formal, um, more professional people like Phil Plate. You know, that's a bad astronomer. I try to recommend um, people checking checking out his page, um, so that you can, you know, like you said, you may not know a whole lot. But you can direct people to people who do know a lot. Yeah. You know. Right. Right. You and, know, and that's you know who those resources thing. are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being that bridge. That's right. Which is another thing I also put at the end, usually of my article, is I try to you know make note of some uh, the, the Ian O'Neill, you know his his uh, his article in um, Field Plate Universe Today. That's one of my yeah. favorites. I love yeah. Nancy. Um, yeah. so. Lovely. Yeah, um, and also there's a there's a car there's a space carnival, the carnival of space, where um, a bunch of the astronomy bloggers and space science bloggers all, you know, submit their stories for the week, and and anyone who does an astronomy blog can participate in this. Um, so to look up carnival of space, I know University Today used to run it. Now it's being run by somebody else. Um, I unfortunately haven't submitted in a long time, uh, but that's a way that you could get your link and and this this carnival it travels to a different blog every week and so you get to you know get all the readers of these blogs together and and cross promote your stuff and I think that's really useful if if you're blogging on astronomy. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, so some of the people who who feel like they don't have many readers, this is something that might yeah. uh, help them get some exposure. Right. Is that what right, you're saying? Right. Yeah, it helps okay. you get exposure, helps you get um, see what else is going on in the blogosphere, and you get to know the other writers a little better. Um, okay. That circle. I, yeah, I've seen carnival. I've seen it a lot, and of course, you know, visited uh, the sites that were hosting it. Yeah. But um, I'm still having a hard time grasping it exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's a different. So there's um, the way it's run now is there's a Google spreadsheet, and you sign up for what date you want to, you know, what week you want to do the carnival. And then there's another Google spreadsheet where everyone just submits their links, and you write a blog post using all those links uh, on your week, basically. So, and then you know, and then everyone is expected to share that link for that carnival. So here's this week's carnival. Uh, so they'll, they'll direct back. 
and they list all the articles. Right. That, oh, okay. I get it. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a really good idea. Said, I'm sorry, I've totally fallen behind on that, but yeah, <laughs> I, I recommend it. Um, I've fallen behind on writing for it, but yeah. And things grow. You know what? Um, any little thing you do, it'll grow. Um, kind of like what I was talking about when I went to the planetarium and, and got them to do that first uh, International Observe the Moon Night, and now they do it. Um, and an audience that, you know, the people who come out on International Observe the Moon Night each year now, that it's getting bigger and bigger and more people yeah, are coming. Yeah, um, and CosmoQuest is a good example. Um, you know, how CosmoQuest started, and now you guys, you're doing more and more and more. Um, how many shows a week do you do now? Five. Five. Plus, we're helping my moon, so they're kind of like five and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's growing, and and uh, and our our user base is, has been growing with time as well. We started out as like, hey, we're these little, we have this thing, um, and yeah, and it's been growing over time and growing the community. Um, and and uh, I wanted to point out a comment um, from Lourdes. It's been uh, commenting on some really great stuff on the event page, uh, but also mentioning, we talked about that long tail, the length of that tail is important, because, you know, when you're integrating under the curve, that still counts. <laughs> I mean, all those audience members count, even though you don't have a lot. There's a lot of people no. that have a little bit... Yeah, sorry, math joke. And, <laughs> you know, you're actually reaching pretty far. That's right. That's right. That community. And imagine, like, I remember when we first started um, astronomy.fm. Mm -hmm. You know, some nights we might have 12 listeners mm -hmm. um, when we started. And a little, in some way, you know, some little part of you says, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. You know, who, am I really, you know. But we kept on doing it, and now the audience is, um, I think it's over 20,000 listeners. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember how many countries, but it's a, countries you just wouldn't even, you would go, oh my god, I didn't know they even had computers there. <laughs> um, you know, so it grows, you know, it grows with time. Um, and so, if, you know, again, don't give up because you only have a few people. Right. It, it'll grow it, and that, you know, just give it time. Yeah. Um, you know. And like you were saying at Cosmic Quest, I guess originally when you first started doing the Hangouts, you probably only had a few people. Right. Well, yes. And well, also, getting... yeah, there was like no one to Google Plus at the time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like us and three guys. But yeah, yeah, and now, now it's it's a much bigger thing, the virtual star party. I, I can't tell you how many radio hand, shows, yeah. how many radio shows I've done that, um, we, you know, I used to be, do the Deep Sky Divas uh, with Marlene yes. Bryan. Yes, I would love to hear about yeah, tell Divas us about the new. Yeah, both of them. Okay, well, a deep sky divas, um, and we've been on hiatus for a little while. We um, we did that show for several years, and uh, we just needed to take a break. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a fun. We had a lot of fun. Just you know, that was um, encompassed everything. You know, we just we just talked about astronomy and space science, and uh, uh, we did a lot of general news, and then had something we focused on each week. Um, well, now we have another show in development. A lot of people um, still write us today asking us to bring Deep Sky Divas back. But what we decided to do is we're going to kind of roll it into a new show, and it's called Space Has Curves. And this show will focus on women in um, astronomy and space science throughout human history. Um, our first show is going to be one of the, the oldest known um, women in astronomy. And we're going to go back and forth between ancient history and today. And we want to try to touch on women that you probably haven't heard of, mm -hmm. um, whose names you haven't heard, who have contributed much to uh, yeah. space science and great. astronomy. And I cannot wait. Uh, I wish I had the logo here. Um, we've got the logo finished up and it's just gorgeous. It's really uh, beautiful. I would love to share that today. Can I can um, I submit some of my favorite female radio astronomers for? for oh, I Denver? wish you would. I, I do. I want you to. Um, there was a woman last. This woman. Um, oh, I'm so excited, and I, I want her to be one of our first shows. Um, I can't remember her name, but just the other day I read that her discovery of uh, what what may be causing um, some satellites to fail. Did you see that? I saw um, that. Space yeah, I saw your post. No, um, I saw the and title. I can't remember her name now either. 
but yes, the, about the space dust. Cosmic, yes, in the plasma. Um, satellite um, failure. This is really fascinating. <laughs> yeah, and so here's a woman. Remember the name. Um, She'd be wonderful to do a story on her, and, and the work that she's done is really, really cool. Um, so watch for that show. I think it's still going to be uh, at least another well, couple of months. EFM, but um, on, okay. yeah, we'll do it on astronomy.fm. Okay. And yeah. who's your co-host? Yeah. Her name is Marlon or uh, Marlene, Marlene, Marlene yeah. Brian, Brian, and um, Leanne Manzer. Um, I think Manz is her last name. Forgive me, Leanne, if I mispronounced it. Now, Leanne is um, with York Observatory, which, by the way, does a um, live telescope viewing on Monday nights, weather permitting, um, from Canada. And they have a fantastic show. That's on astronomy.fm. She's with them, but uh, we asked her to, uh, to join us at uh, Space Has First. So. Oh, fantastic. Okay, we will watch for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, where can we find you and your blog and all your stuff? Do you have a website that we could share out? Yeah, um, and I haven't been doing anything on it lately, again, because um, I've just been real busy, and so I've kind of toned down my, my astronomy outreach. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I have, um, with Rob Cowan, we have a skyfullofstars.com. Okay. Um, I think that he's doing some work on that the past couple of weeks, so he may have it turned off right now. We're making some changes there, um, fixing a few things, but it's a skyfullofstars.com. Mm -hmm. um, and we do a lot of astronomy uh, productions there. Uh, we do a lot of uh, podcasts. We've done a few for um, 365 Days of Astronomy. Mm -hmm. and, Which uh, this is and now going into, this show. By the way, <laughs> we've lowered oh. 365. Yeah, the hangout. Yeah. Well. <laughs> cool. You're doing a show right now for that. Continues. Hey, <laughs> you know what? There's 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 a perfect example example for somebody to if you want to get involved in astronomy outreach, um, do a podcast. Oh yeah. For 365 days of astronomy, uh, I think that's one of the greatest things ever to come along. Um, because uh, you can just talk about your favorite subject. You don't have to have, you can do it all alone at your desk mm -hmm. and um, just do a little recording. Um, and that's a, that's a fun way to get the message out to people. If, if you, you know, and, and if you're somebody who thinks you do want to get involved in the, the internet radio and um, live streaming and stuff, there's a good way to get your feet wet right there. Yeah, yeah so yeah. definitely. Yeah. And then um, you're on Twitter also, Tabby. I know I see you quite a bit on Twitter, right? Yeah, yes. and I haven't been on there much. I'm yeah. telling you, I just have really been out of the public eye lately. Um, but I'm on Twitter, and it's um, what is my Twitter handle? It's is it? It's just your name. Yeah, I just shared that. Tabby Griner or Tabby Ann? <laughs> Tabby Griner. Um, I think okay. Tabby Ann is your is is the the name associated with it. Tabby Griner is your Twitter handle. Okay. Um, so I've, I've and I'm also. That link. I'm also on Facebook, um, uh, and then um, is there a way I can type? Let me see. I'm going to try something real quick, okay? If you type in the chat, I can copy it out for That's you. That's what I'll do. I'll put it okay. in our private chat. Um, I yeah, so look for the purple flower uh, avatar on Twitter yeah. <laughs> with the NASA logo in the middle of it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is the first time I'm talking to you and you're not a purple flower. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And and I see you've also got the uh, the space tweep mascot on your avatar as well. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> and how about that? You know about uh, Jen and Andy, and the new edition? No, no, I don't either. I was following that a little bit for a while, and then I've gotten busy too. So explain that and tell us. Yeah, space tweep. They just had a pre-launch part a pre-launch party last week. Um, there's going to be a little. Jen and Andy soon. Oh, okay. So the space tweeps are having mini tweeps. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, the space tweep society. Um, tweep. I'm not. I'm not gonna describe this well. It's it's a group of people who I, I first heard of it through um, when I was going to see shuttle launches. Uh, it was people that were getting together right. to watch launches um, and and share their love of of space exploration. Yeah, it was some of the first tweet ups. Yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Is 
this At least when yeah. I first started hearing of, about it, um, they were involved in getting some of that going too. So, and I think Tavi, have you been? You've been to some of the tweet ups that NASA's had. I went to the the second tweet up that they had, which it was the first one on this coast. It was at NASA headquarters in Washington. Cool. Um, Rob Town and I went, and um, and on um, Jean McCulka. Do you know Jean McCulka? Yeah. He does, um, I don't think I know. With Sawyer, um, they started the, um, uh, I got a blank, um, what's that radio show that they do? Talking Space. Yeah. Um, but he was there. That's the uh, first time I met Gene. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I went to that. Now, And I haven't been to any other tweet-ups, but when they launched the Grail spacecraft, the, the two Grail oh, orbiters. Oh, cool. I, um, NASA invited me. Which was really, really cool. Right. Yeah. Invited me, sent me a personal invite to come down there, and um, as a VIP for uh, myself and my family. And so they were doing the tweet up. Of course, they had a tweet up there. Right. And um, so I got to see some of the people that were in the tweet up, particularly Suzanne Kennison and Camilla. Camilla oh, came and paid oh, a special. I love Camilla. <laughs> Yeah. I was at the SDL launch, so <laughs> me and Camilla go way back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a Camilla hipster. <laughs> My poor daughter, she uh, she loves Camilla. She just adores Camilla. She's um she's ten years old, and she you know when she finally got to meet Camilla at the launch, she got to sit. She put Camilla on the picnic table to sit beside her, and I feel so sorry for her. She dropped Camilla on her face. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> she was so mortified. Poor little thing. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, Camilla's okay. <laughs> she was all right. She was she, fine. She, right? she did good. Camilla went to space. I'm pretty sure falling off the Stop. picnic table is not going to This is not going to hurt her. I have a micro Camilla. Oh. This came in my little packet at the um, SDO line. She just found it recently. The <laughs> <A> micro. <laughs> the micro Camilla. <laughs> yes. I just, I just, I'm still unpacking from my move nine months ago, and I found my micro Camilla. Oh, that was amazing. Well, that's just found out that is so small. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Now I put a link. Here, here's the something flicker? else that will. Oh. Here's something else that will help. Um. I mean, that you can do mm -hmm. as an individual. Um, I like to take photos of the night sky. I'm, you know, nothing, no great photographer or anything. But um, the night sky itself is pretty, so pretty much whatever you do is going to be something that people are going to look at and have an interest in. And so I try to always share my images, and I get a lot of people. That's a hook, mm -hmm. and that's a great hook. I have a lot of people. Um, and I can think of a few right now that never had any, any interest in the sky, and now they are very involved in astronomy, and they are taking their own pictures, mm -hmm. um, just because of that first original thing with me sharing one of my images. Um, so that's a great thing. Don't ever be afraid to share. Don't, don't, you don't need to be shy or modest. Anything that you do is good. Um, it's the point of sharing, you know, and that's the thing. So that's a, that's a link for some of my photos. Yeah, I put that oh, in, in the event page. Um, I'll add that to the YouTube description as well. I'm looking at your sun pictures. They are so gorgeous. I Thank guess you. you're using a filter on your camera? Yeah, those ones with or, are they or sunspots. Or yeah, the sunspot are those... pictures. Yeah, uh, I make, let me tell you what filter I use. <laughs> I use one of my, you can see my dogs behind me. So um, I have a couple of solar filters for that, okay. and yeah. I don't have one for my camera. I, I, I want to get one for my camera and one for my big binoculars. I do have a little pair of solar binoculars, but anyway, I make my son go outside and hold and hold in front of my camera lens, hold my solar filter there because it's so big, it's huge. <laughs> yeah, and he holds yeah. it in place for me. Oh my goodness! Um, while I get those pictures. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Lourdes also. Um, commented another way of doing outreach is making YouTube videos. Uh, she did one about Earth Cam and, uh, in English and in Spanish. Um, so yeah, YouTube yeah. video. Uh, you, you've, got, you've got, where did my phone go? I don't know. But you've got a little video camera with you pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. um, most cameras you can take small video with or you can use a webcam. Um, that's another great way of, of sharing your passion. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. Um, wow, gosh, I hadn't even thought about that. I might do a couple of things. <laughs> I love doing stuff like that. I, you know, I really, something I really miss a lot is um, with, with uh, SLU, 
doing the the nightly thing with um you know you know we'd stop and take a picture of uh, the heart nebula. Mm -hmm. That is like so much fun to talk about the heart nebula and the science of it. You know, um, I really miss doing that. I miss talking to people um, about the science of deep yeah. space. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever gone into um, schools, Tavi, um, to share and and with the kids? Um, no, I'm trying to think if I have not not in a, as far as astronomy goes. No, uh -huh. okay. um, and I probably should, um, but no, I've been kind of busy and I really haven't thought <laughs> about that. Right, and my children, and one reason I don't think about it is because my children are homeschooled. Right. And so a lot of times, right. I, I I kind of forget about public school, and I should <laughs> not. I really should not. <laughs> But that's a, if you're comfortable with kids, and especially if you're, you know, especially if it's a certain age that you're comfortable with, you know, you can go to a school and you can volunteer, um, you know, your services just as, you know, someone who'd like to come and talk about astronomy, um, the solar system, could be telescopes, and again, this could be through um, an astronomy club that happens a lot, but it wouldn't have to be, like you say, if you sometimes, if you just make it known in the community that, you know, this is a hobby, and you'd like to come share it um, with the kids. Sometimes that's just another, another idea, another way. Because a lot of times the teachers, especially at the elementary level, they're looking for um, people to come in and talk to their students who have some knowledge. And and actually, you're better suited to do it than having um, like a university professor. Sorry, Nicole. Oh yeah, no, I I totally <laughs> and do it you. because you're at again. It's making that connection. You're at you know you're giving them just what they need an awareness of the sky, all the cool things that you can see out there with just binoculars or just your own eyes. You know the ISS, all you know all that wow stuff, Saturn. You know that's, and there's that's so many fun thing to do. Fun little things that you can yeah, do. It doesn't have to be you big. know the size of the solar system and you know get the toilet paper roll out and do yeah. all that. Oh yeah, that's and they have so much idea. fun with that. They would so again if you you know if you're comfortable with kids, you like kids, and you want to go that route, you know most teachers are really grateful to have somebody come in and and share yeah. their and, class with them for a few. Years. And and I know I do know some people who do that um mm -hmm. with their you know through their children's school and um and they're not professional astronomers and and a couple of them are not even with an astronomy club. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. a, that's another great yeah. idea. Just your hobby, yeah. just something you enjoy and you want to share. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Absolutely. That's a wonderful idea. Wow. And that's wow. the most the main thing. I hope that the people who are tuned in tonight um I hope that you'll start to share the night sky, you know, uh, with people around you, with your neighbors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and your friends and family. Um, encourage them to uh, to go outside and look up. You know, we we that. got a question from Todd Howard asking if we'll do a follow up on this chat in a few months' time, and I think that might be a good idea. Um, all of you watching, <laughs> you've now been <laughs> tasked. <laughs> um, yeah. Get, go ahead and give some of these things a try, and I think maybe we could get some kind of discussion on how they've worked, um, and and we can come back with some feedback. That would, would be a lot of like fun. A idea? That would be fun. A little experience. Yes. Any any um, you know, any new things that you may have come up with the 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 audience? Something what what you have done? I think that's great. Let's let's yeah. put that challenge to everyone. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Cool. That's a yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah, so so stick around. Um, let us know what you've been working on. Um, you can get to us uh, by the CosmoQuest Google Plus page. Um, that's one good place we could start collecting ideas. Uh, or educate at CosmoQuest.org. Yeah, that's just how say you can they get can email. Mm -hmm. Email um, anything in. Um, that's maybe one of the easiest. Or just keep using the learning space hashtag. Since we only you know use it for the show on Wednesdays anyway, that's a, if, if you're on Twitter, you want to tweet about this stuff. <laughs> That would be cool. All right. Yeah, that um, would be awesome. Uh, I wanted, oh, one, one last homework. Yes, Citizen Gold oh. homework. <laughs> <laughs> you found your learning space homework. Go pick uh, oh, one of these yeah. ideas and give it a try. Um, you know, in person, online, writing. I know I'm, despite um, the appearance I put on, I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. And the idea of talking to a stranger in the grocery store just terrifies me. <laughs> So you don't all have to do that. <laughs> do you know what? I am too. Typically, I'm really? very, very quiet. My whole life, everyone always said you're too quiet. 
The astronomy <laughs> has changed that. Now I can't um, shut up. <laughs> I don't know. It's just oh, that's scary. Maybe I just I do I do this online, and I don't want to talk to people when I'm not on. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, Patrick Manley uh, adds a comment that um, Hi, we're talking about kids. <laughs> we are all kids, uh, way deep down inside, and I think, um, like you said, astronomy brings that out in people. Mm-hmm. That is, it does. Patrick is someone who's uh, really involved in outreach yes. um, with his club, so he's a, he's a good example of uh, as someone to look to. So yeah. he does a lot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one other thing I wanted to I wanted to slightly embarrass uh, Chris Rand who asked a question earlier because he came up with a very interesting and unique way of doing astronomy outreach. He's putting the CosmoQuest logo on his tri um, triathlon jersey. <laughs> so <laughs> that is really? awesome, and we love you, and we love you, Nasty Calendar, for that. <laughs> so that's just another, you know, like. Out of the blue, great idea of how to, you know. Wow, that's good. I got pulled. I got pulled for a, a license check the a uh, couple of weeks ago, mm. and <laughs> the very young state trooper walked to the back of my car. I guess they check you walk back there and look. And he came back with the most puzzled look on his face, and he said, and he was dead serious. He goes, "I have a NASA logo back there." He said, "Are you an astronaut?" <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed, and I said, uh, no. And he said, but, I, but you have a NASA logo. Like, if you have a NASA logo, you are an astronaut. And I just laughed. I didn't even respond to it. Um, <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But he was very serious. He was very serious. Did you get out of the ticket? Which, oh, wait, you see, it shows you check. how little people know about uh, NASA <laughs> and what NASA does. and. Yeah. So it was funny. Yeah, it really, you know, sometimes we're all talking with each other in our in our groups that are all astronomy enthusiasts and mm -hmm. space lovers, and you really do forget that you get outside of, of our groups, and and people don't know because um, they're they're busy and you know they're just not thinking about it. They're not aware of what's going on in the sky. I didn't know them. before I got involved. You know, when, I... when you point that out to them, it's it's just amazing. Um, I shared, you know, Nicole had the, the glasses at the beginning of the um, program, and, and I had a class at the university the night of the Venus transit, but I just thought, you know, and I almost skipped, but I was good, and I didn't skip, and, but I took a bunch of those glasses <laughs> with me, and at break, um, I just, you know, I gave them out to my fellow students, and they all went out, and they were just amazed, and they had no idea, and then some of them wanted to take glasses home <laughs> to their kids, and, and I said, you know, well, the transit's, it's, you know, going to be over by the time, because it was a long class, and, and then the sun was setting, of course, anyway, so, yeah. but it didn't matter, you know, they wanted to look at just the sun, because even, you know, without the planet up there, the sun with the glasses is really cool. Yeah. It sure is. I give those yeah, glasses and out. You can, you know, not be afraid to look. Just looking at the sun is amazing. So it is. Yeah, it's just finding those opportunities and just, you know, going for it, I guess. I, you know what? And so you make a good point. Your class is a good one. A lot of people are going to school. Um, and so the class, find out if there's going to be an ISS pass during your class. <laughs> Get everyone outside. That's something else I've done at work um, when I work the midnight shift. Hey, the, it, in the morning time when it's a morning pass. Come on, guys, let's go outside and look at the space station. You know? I've dragged so. people out of bars. Yeah. Break yeah. Yes, there you go. <laughs> yes, toast to the astronauts. Woo. Yeah. Uh, there awesome. You go. Awesome. Oh, my God, we could have a whole show on, on alcohol and astronomy outreach. But <laughs> After um, hours. Yes. After <laughs> hours. <laughs> um, but I would like to, to wrap up and, and yeah, thank wow. you so, so much much for, for coming in and talking about all of this stuff. Um, and I'm challenging all of our <laughs> viewers to go ahead and, and give give one or more of these a try. Um, do you have any last thoughts or summation or, you know? <laughs> Me? No, yes. this has been a lot of fun. And, and, you know, I think the great summation, that our last thoughts is that uh, we're challenging you <laughs> to, uh, to get out and do some, some little thing. And if you come up with a new idea, some little little thing, share it. Um, yeah. Uh, 
uh, I'm certainly interested in Yeah, I love the idea of collecting all these little, you know, sort of odd ideas, little things mm -hmm. you can do to share. It'll be a blog post. I, that's what I'm we'll going to do. A, yeah, we'll we'll write on my to-do list. list right now on the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Tavi, we'll have to have you come back and... Um, Maybe especially after you launch um, Space Has Curves, and, yeah. or you know, or after whenever we want to end this challenge. I don't know uh -huh. how long you want to give people. I uh, don't know. And and follow up. Definitely. Well, let's give them a couple of months because a lot of people are still in the really cold weather, yeah. um, and the springtime is weather one of the better. best times to share. Uh, people are more willing to go outside and and have a look at what the thing you're so excited about. So, great. Okay. All right, but yeah, thank you, Tavi. This was awesome. This was thank so you for fun. having me. Yeah, a lot of fun. Excellent. And uh, and everyone who tuned in tonight, thank you. Yep. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone uh, for watching, uh, for participating, commenting, sharing your ideas. Like I said, I'll put up a blog post on CosmoQuest.org/blog. Um, we can start collecting things there. Start using Great. comments there. Um, and tomorrow, what's today? Wednesday. Tomorrow is the <laughs> Planetary Society Hangout at noon Pacific, uh, which is hosted by Emily Lakdawalla. And then Friday at noon Pacific is the Weekly Space Hangout with me and Fraser Kane and a whole slew of space journalists. Uh, we'll be talking about our favorite stories from the week. Um, and special event I want to note, next week's, not this week's, but next week's, March, what is it, 8th something? Calendar. Yeah, it's March 8th, <laughs> Weekly Space Hangout, and March 10th, Virtual Star Party. We will be streaming to you live from South by Southwest, so if you're in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest, there's a huge NASA tent um, and JWST model. Come say hi uh, or join one of those hangouts if you can't be in Austin. We'll be streaming live from the event, so check it out. Excellent. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Okay. Good night. Bye. All right, good night.